So here's a shot of my DIY Telecine. It's a uh, Eastman video trim projector. And uh, it's got the five blade shutter. And then I have a special lamp that I made for it. It's a uh, LED lamp with a diffuser in front of it. I'm going to have that going from a uh, function generator into a solid state relay. Okay, so that blinks the bulb off and on at whatever uh, hertz I want to set it to since LEDs get flashed so quickly. Here's the uh, film just finishing going through the gate. Here's my black magic pocket. Cinema camera 4K, and here's a microscope lens mounted to a C mount adapter. And this is my current setup. So let me turn it off right quick. Now you can probably hear me a little better. Here's the another shot of that lamp. So basically, it's a it's a little flat panel uh, LED lamp that's used for backlighting LCD panels. And then I put a diffuser in front of it so that it would all blend together. And there's no, no uh, projector lens in, right? So then I have a uh, 0.5x microscope lens that I got off of Amazon, pretty cheap. And so I image the gate directly. And by having the diffuse light source behind it, Set at, I set this one at a thousand hertz for this, this project, and I can control the exact frequency of the light blinking off and on. It's blinking at a thousand hertz, which to the camera running at 30 uh, frames a second uh, makes the flicker transparent. Basically, it blends together. This is flickering so quickly that the camera doesn't pick it up. Okay, just like your human eye doesn't pick up the 60 hertz flicker from normal house lights. So uh, anyway, I have, you can set this from 1.5 to I think three and a half times zoom. This has the Blackmagic uh, 4K sensor. And so I'm only using about 90% of the sensor when I'm capturing. The reason it's shifted over to the left a little bit is because it'll hit this, that little knob, right? The lens hits that knob if I try to perfectly align it. So I, I go a little off center and then I correct it in DaVinci Resolve. And so, oh man, it's still running. Let's turn that off. Okay, so then the Blackmagic Pocket, I can't, there's no iris on this lens. So you have two options then. You can dim the light source, which I really don't care to mess with. There's no iris adjustment, so I have to work everything through um, changing the, um, let's see, the ISO. The ISO setting I'm using right now is 250, and uh, I can drop that down to 100 or all the way up to like 3200, but it, you know, normally I never have to go over 250 because the lamp is bright enough to uh, work with the film. I have this set to 30 frames a second because that's a five blade shutter and it works better at that, um, you know, that frames per second. The film was shot at 24 frames a second, but a second is a second. It doesn't matter if it's divided up 30 times or 24 times. The, uh, what I'm capturing is still going to be uh, 24 frames a second going into the uh, camera, but it's just uh, the way it records it. And so what I can do is I can take it into Resolve and slow it back down to 24 frames a second. And I can, um, if I had a uh, 24 frame a second projector, and I do, but it's not working right now, uh, I could just go to 24 frames a second. And uh, so let's go look at the results. I'm going to take this into, that. it's recorded to this little hard drive right here. A solid straight drive, Samsung T5 500 uh, gig drive. And so I just switch this camera off. And I can remove the, I'll turn the power off to the battery too. Dis disconnect the USB C connector from the camera, right? It's a little hard. Might have it partly screwed in there. Hang on a second. 
Ah, yeah, I guess so. It's being a little hard. Okay, there we go. So now I can just take the uh, I can take the drive out, and this is just a regular solid state drive with USB C, uh, USB 3.1, so it's high speed solid state drive, and I can go right into DaVinci Resolve and edit the footage directly. So uh, right off of here, into Resolve, then I I um, so it's recorded in the Blackmagic RAW format, uh, so you get to play with the ISO. You can change the ISO from 100 up to 1250 uh, without affecting the image, you know, other than changing the density of the image. And you can change the color balance, everything right there in DaVinci Resolve because this is recorded raw. I don't, I'm not limited. Um, it, it captures everything that was on that film. And that's why my films maybe look pretty good. And the other thing is I don't have any grain from a screen because I'm not projecting off a screen. I'm going directly from the lens right to the to the film gate and it's a little tricky to focus it so what i do is i loosen this and slide it back and forth till i get sharp focus on the screen zoomed in onto the film then i back it up and then i start it over again and record it there's no heat generated by this bulb because it's an led bulb so i can just leave it on and uh that's basically my 16 millimeter setup and my my eight millimeter setup's the same thing except i i swap the projector out with a um uh, a uh bolex 18.5 projector and then i record using the camera i can set it to 18 frames a second but it it records it at 18 frames a second and then outputs it at 24 frames a second it just speeds it up and uh it just changed the time signature on the on the frame frame rate and so when I bring it into Resolve, it comes in at 24 frames a second, even though I captured it at the projector's maximum 18 frames a second, and the camera set to 18 frames a second. And then I bring it into Resolve and it's 24 frames a second. And so let me pull in on the uh, projector first. The projector is an Eastman 16 millimeter video film, model TV 12 M6. And so uh, they're, they're a little hard to find, but this one was in like, new condition when I I got it off of eBay. I think it was probably owned by a school or something like that. Anyway, uh, it has a five blade shutter, which means it can transfer 24 frame a second film into 30 frame a second video. And that's what it's set up for. It has a synchronous motor, which means it has a, a cog drive belt and pulleys that make it run at an exact constant rate based on the um, frequency of the current coming out of the wall in the United States at 60 hertz. So it has a 60 hertz synchronous motor which drives the projector exactly at 24 frames a second. It has optical and magnetic sound, which I don't have any current need for, but uh, maybe in the future. Anyway, let's go look at the lamp housing. I've done some modifications to the lamp housing and the lamp. So I removed the hot tungsten lamp out of there and I installed an LED panel, okay? And it's diffused by a white uh, piece of plastic. And going out of that, I go into a solid state relay here and it's a DC solid state. Don't confuse this with an AC solid state. It goes the input trigger side is from 3 to uh, 32 volts DC. The output side is a switch, basically, that's solid state. And it goes from 5 uh, all the way up to 200 volts in DC. Okay, I'm only running uh, about 12 volts through this L uh, LCD panel, so this is well within. This doesn't even get anywhere near warm. Anyway, I've soldered it and uh, in series with the battery and the lamp going through the switched side. And then uh, let me put that back away and go over here. This is a, this is basically a frequency test signal generator. And out here is a, a five volt output. And so when I turn this thing on, let me see if I have it plugged in, I'll turn it on. No, I don't have the power on. Let me turn that on right quick. Okay. 
So you see it comes on, it has a LED uh, or uh, a LCD display here. And so I switched this from kilohertz to hertz and then I run it at a thousand hertz for the square wave. So the square wave comes out and drives the uh, solid state relay and switches the LED. Right now it's set to one hertz, so it's going off and on at one time a second. If I were to set that to a thousand hertz, then you get a thousand hertz of, uh, since LEDs are capable of switching so quickly, it can actually output a thousand hertz exactly uh, as, it, as its input through the uh, solid state relay. So it's a pretty simple setup as far as the light's concerned. But what that lets me do is it lets me dial in an exact frequency that does not uh, affect the um, uh, vid video recording and, and cause artifacts like flickering. So uh, to moving along, I'm going to turn my lens here so maybe we can see some markings on it. It's a two to one microscope, C-mount microscope lens. I'll try to put a link in the description. Here we go. Actually, it's a point, a point five X. So 0 0.5 X microscope lens. This is for a video microscope. And so uh, I can adjust it to exactly frame my 16 millimeter frame. And then I have a um, micro four thirds to C-mount. Then this goes into it. And this covers the sensor, actually covers the sensor pretty well. Not perfectly, but uh, probably about 90% of the sensor. And so since the... Uh, the, the, the frame is almost square coming out of, uh, it's 1.33, uh, I think it is. It's like a four, 4 to 3 aspect ratio, which is, you know, not quite square, but pretty close. Anyway, it goes into here, and then I set this to 30 frames a second. And then I set the shutter angle to 270 degrees. I set the camera to take at 30 frames a second because of the five blade shutter that's necessary on this camera. And then I white balance. I, I run a white leader up into the gate and I use a um, marks a lot to, to make marks on the white leader. And then I focus, you focus by moving the camera in and out because this doesn't focus. All it does is change the um, size of the image in, on the sensor. And so to focus it, I have to move the camera in and out. And so I just un unlock it and move it in and out on the um, base plate. And then once I get a nice sharp image, I punch in and I double check it. And then uh, I, I start rolling on the camera at 30 frames a second. And I turn this thing on. I'll turn it on just for a second. Uh, it's pretty loud. Okay, so this is not a quiet projector, but it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm, I'm not recording sound with it. Anyway, that's my basic setup.